Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Ah, well, welcome, curd nerds. Or should I say, g'day, curd nerds. Uh, it's lovely to see you all here today. Uh, we've got lots of people watching today. Um, let me just fix up the sound and we'll get that music back on because people seems to like it. Righto. Um, so, I think it's going. Yes, there we go. Uh, not as uh, not as loud as what it was before. Just up a little bit. Just... There we go. Oh, oh there we go. Perfect. Rightio. Um, thank you, everybody, um, for turning up today. This is Ask the Cheese Man, episode 231. Now, we've got two a week now, so we're churning through the numbers. For those who don't know, I'm Gavin Weber. I'm the host and chief curd nerd and will be, hopefully, answering your cheese-making questions today. So, uh, let's crack into a few g'days first. Uh... Who was the first cab off the rank today? Uh, it was Tracy from cheeseneeds.com. Hello, Tracy. Love to see you and glad your toe's not broken but still sore. Um, we got Wodge. G'day, Wodge. Uh, Chris. We've got Shauna. Who else we got? We got Donna. Hello, Donna. Uh, Mark W. Hello, Mark. Uh, where else? Where else? Uh, artificial banana. Cheese. Nice to cheese you. <laughs> yeah, right back at you, mate. Uh, Alex, hello Alex, how are you? Michael and Jenny, hello Michael and Jenny in Adelaide, lovely to see you. Patricia, glad to see you back in um, in Canada again. And sorry that you've got COVID-19. I'm yet to catch it, taking all the precautions necessary, uh, even though I've been uh, vaccinated and double boosted. I still don't want to catch the thing. Anyway, uh, who else we got? We got Hannah Ruth, hello Hannah, how are you? Cool Cat, Jim, we got Jan, hello Jan, Robert up in Sydney, g'day Robert, um, who else we got, Ooh, Cool Cat, hello Cool Cat, uh, where else, Croesus of Borg, wouldn't be a show without you mate, uh, and Paddy, hello Paddy, how are you, alrighty, lots of lovely people, now, um, of course, the show wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to be put on without all of the lovely YouTube members and patrons. So we've got lots of new YouTube members, um, probably because I said I've been throwing some gift memberships around, but it's building up. So there's all of the new YouTube mem members. Thank you to one and all, um, especially Habib. He's um, uh, paid for it himself. Good on you, mate. Thank you very much. And uh, there is another slide for all the patrons. And there are all the patrons. And thank you to Robert, our newest patron over on patreon.com. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Um, yeah, I um, there haven't been any long-form videos of late besides the, the, um, uh, the streams, of course, uh, because I've been unwell. Um, remember back about, what, up six weeks ago, I mentioned I had this condition called epididymitis, which is not nice, by the way. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to look it up. It's a little bit sensitive, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for. Um, and it had a flare up. So I had to go back on antibiotics and I've been incapacitated uh so yeah anyway moving right along uh today i'm feeling a bit well enough i'm gonna make uh, i had a bit of a cheese disaster the cheese that i made for alpine blossom or alp blossom as they call it um because i'd been unwell i hadn't been caring for it so it was wasting away in the cheese fridge and it turned all sorts of nasty kind of mold and squishy and I tried to recover it and it was just a mess. I tasted some of it, it was rancid. Um, so basically today I have to remake that cheese. 
because I've got all the footage, I just have to show the finished cheese. So today I'm making a cheese without um, uh, without actually filming it. So how good's that? That's, uh, that's just something nice and relaxing. I don't have the extra uh, uh, fuss of setting up all the camera equipment and all that sort of stuff. I'll just be in my kitchen today making cheese. Standing there and have a chair and sit down and just relax. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, but I do have some footage that is ready to go. I'm just in post-production now, just putting the final edit on it. Uh, it's just taken like three weeks. Um, and that's the smoky paprika rub kefili that I've made. So that'll be good fun. Anyway, we've got a... Um, uh, and of course, at uh, 30 minutes past the hour, we've got the gallery and we've got some jokes thrown in there as well. And we've got our first super chat of the day. You've got the curd nerd light going. Thank you very much, Cheryl. I'll just turn that off and we'll get that up there. So here we are. Uh, thank you, Cheryl, for the $20 US. That's amazing. Uh, it says, um, hi, I've been spit roasting beef by hand today. Just made it to the start. My question is, I will be given three gallons of frozen goat's milk next Saturday. What kind of cheese should I make with it? Thank you for your knowledge. Um, well, you can make any cheese with it, really, Cheryl. Um, frozen milk will defrost okay. Uh, you shouldn't have too many problems with it. I've used frozen cow's milk and not had too much trouble at all. In fact, I made a my very first raw milk... What was it? Uh, Vaccio Romano. So... Yeah, yeah, it turned out fantastic. I had no issues whatsoever. Um, now, Tracy, who's in the chat from um, Cheese Needs, she has goats as well. Um, so if you've got any other info, uh, Tracy, just throw it up in the chat for Cheryl, please. That will be lovely. Um, thanks, Cheryl. Uh, okay, the next... Oh, I'm missing heaps of stuff. Hang on, can I make it this bigger? Oh, there we go. There's all my stuff. Um, somebody said, uh, Alex says, what music am I into? Well, currently, uh, right now, I'm playing a playlist from Epidemic Sound, which is the service I use to get all the music for all the videos. And it's royalty free um, and I get no copyright claims and it's really good. So this playlist is called Kitchen Sound Beds. I don't know, it's just kitchen music apparently, and I think it sounds pretty good. So there you go, that's what I'm into today. Uh, but yeah, I mix it up and change the music occasionally, so it's very good. Um, right. Uh, is the first, is this the first question? Could be, this will do. Uh, Jacinta says, you have mentioned yeast on previous videos. Uh, should I be proving proofing my bread out of the kitchen while I make cheese. Um, yes, yes, if you're um, letting uh, dough rise from, now that's got yeast in it, and it is best not to get cross-contamination of yeast into the milk. Um, although there aren't that many fermentables for normal yeast in milk, it still can get contamination and the result is a sponge-like curd, um, especially when it's sitting there for an hour or two, and that's CO2 bubbles forming in the curd. Um, it can also sometimes be confused with um, with a coliform infection. Well, I'm not in the center. A coliform infection, and uh, rarely is it coliform if you're using pasteurized milk, but uh, usually it's a yeast infection. But thanks, Jacinta. Great question. Um, uh, here's a question from Mark. It says, I recently stopped uh, to at buy a new... What? Stopped by a new cheesemonger. I was approached with, what can you get? Should I be alarmed by the approach? Or is cheese viewing overrated? Um... Uh, right, I think I understand the question. Viewing cheese at a cheesemonger's is good fun because usually, if the cheesemonger's a good cheesemonger, they will give you a tiny taste test of the cheeses that you're interested in. 
before you buy. So then at least you'll know that the cheese you're getting is good quality, tastes good, and you'll be pleased with it when you get it home. So yeah, cheese viewings are good fun. Uh, I've been to one or two. All right. Uh, Patricia says, hello, Patricia. Love to see you as always. Uh, no cameras or lights to dance around when you're making your cheese, Gavin. Nice. I tell you what, I don't know how many times I've tripped over those light stands, Patricia. Just when I'm just about to put something into the milk. Oh, it's... Anyway, it'll be a pleasure. It'll be... Kim says, Gav, even though you're feeling a bit sore, just do it today. And I said, well, I've got the milk. I don't want it to go off, so why not? Uh, okay. Uh, cool Cat says, uh, just looked up your medical con... Oh, my... <laughs> oh, I get it. Um, oh my, just looked up your medical condition, condition, Gav. Hope your throat feels better. Winky face. Yeah, my throat is starting to feel better. Thanks, mate. Yeah, it's not good. Um, Tracy's got some info about that frozen stuff, frozen milk. Uh, it says, frozen goat's milk, thaw in the fridge. Sherv is perfect for goat's milk, but you can basically make anything. Um, and a cheese that Tracy's developed called Yesterday's uh, is another good one because you don't need to use the lipase as it's already there. Fantastic. Well done. Um, uh, Croesus of Borg says, I've never seen a blue made with goat's milk. Mmm, Limgoater. <laughs> Limburg's made with brevi bacterial linens, not blue mould. Anyway, um... Tracy says, I make blue with goat and bloomy cheeses work just fine. All right, fantastic. Um, and Patricia has jumped in there, which is fantastic. Says, Gavin made a goat, a blue goat. Uh, the video is called Bloomy Goat Blue. It's delicious. Indeed it is. I love the ash as well and the white mold on the outside. And uh, even though there's no... Hang on, I'll just take a sip. Hang on. Even though there's no actual blue veins in the cheese, there is an all-round blue flavour. So thanks, Patricia, for highlighting that, um, that cheese. It was really nice. Um, rightio. Um, Cheryl says... Um, I have never bought any moulds yet. I just add rennet and a few basic cultures. You should um, you should give it a go. Even though, uh, Cheryl, it's a lot more work, I must say, when you're adding uh, either penicillium candidum for the white mould or penicillium roque 40 for the blue mould. It's a little bit more work to do. You've got to be a little bit more diligent in your affinage. So looking after the cheese during maturation. Uh, and yeah, you just got to treat it a little bit more like a baby, even though I treat the cheese like a baby anyway. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, you really do have to look after a little bit more. Um, and of course, there's all new experiences in com com that comes with making a cheese with molds. So whatever you learnt before, retain some of it. But I tell you what, there's some more exciting things that happen to your cheese when you when you add in your own moulds. So, um, uh, Shauna says Bathurst 1000, which is a car race here in Australia, and cheese making today. What more could a nerd ask for? Indeed, um, I. I think what I'm going to do today when I'm making my cheese, I'm actually going to, I'm going to use my phone and I'm going to film some, um, some vertical videos, you know, the shorts. So I'll see if I can get away with some of those. That'll be interesting. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but that'll be, it'll be interesting anyway. Um, what time is it? It's quarter past. Right. Um, Michael's got a question. It says, what's the best way to clean wax for reuse uh, after removing it from my Yalesburg? Okay, so Michael, what I do is I just make up a, because uh, uh, that little half sink that I've got. 
So I just fill that with warm soapy water uh, and I get a, a nail brush, you know, those little soft nail brushes. Um, and what I do is um, I just dunk the wax in the warm water and it goes a little bit malleable. Uh, and any of the cheesy bits that are on there, I just brush them off with the, with the brush and the wax doesn't come off. Um, so the cheese comes off, the wax doesn't with the warm soapy water. Uh, and then once it's clean, I'll just pat it dry with a paper towel and then roll it up into a little ball and put it back into my waxing container to be melted for the next time. So that's what I do uh, with the wax. Okay. Uh, cool Cat <laughs> says, the natural progression seems to be Australian cheese raising at Bathurst. <laughs> yeah, nice. I like that. That's very good indeed. All righty. I've got, I've got a couple of jokes. Well, we're in the laughing mood. Here we go. Um, this is, these are so dad jokes. These are dad cheese jokes, right? Uh, I was walking home and somebody, uh, threw a block of cheese. Oh, hang on. I'll start again. Oh, the curtain lights going off. Goodness me. Who's, hang on. We'll, we'll fix that. Who was that? That was Cheryl. Cheryl. Thank you. Says, enjoy your coffee. I'm enjoying a Bloody Mary. Oh, that'd be nice for breakfast, wouldn't it? Um, uh, you don't know, uh, sorry, I don't know if I have time to do a moldy cheese. Uh, I really need to be, I really need to quite my real job. Huh? Um, okay. Um, not sure what that last bit means, but yeah, it, yeah, it does take a little bit more time, mate. So, but thank you so much for the $10. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. So back to the joke. Uh, I was walking home and somebody threw a block of cheese at my head. It wasn't very mature. Get it? <laughs> oh, goodness me. Yeah, oh, sorry. Forgot to show the joke. Oh, goodness me. All right. Uh, one more. One more. Uh, right, here we are. This is a bit silly. Another dad joke. Um, my daughter called to tell me she saw a man driving a fast car made of macaroni and cheese. She was doing 80 in a Honda and he was driving past her. Get it? Here we go. You're probably better when you read it. Get it? Driving past her? <laughs> Rightio. Yeah, right. That's, that's enough cheesy jokes for a second. Anyway, um, uh, right, we do have a question. Uh, Croesus of Borg says, uh, Gavin, is there any research going on for new molds for cheese to create new cheeses, or is the industry sticking to the old favourites? Um, I think that they've discovered all the mouldy cheese that they possibly can. Uh, as in the actual molds that infect the cheese. Uh, science and, bio and microbiology is, well, it's fairly well advanced these days. So I think they found all of the cheese molds that they're possibly going to find. Um, but as far as making different styles of cheese, then that's up to the individual cheese maker. I'm sure there are artisan cheese makers out there that have made unusual but very tasty cheeses with some of the traditional molds. Um, Patty says, um, why does penicillium, I think I spelled it correctly, Roque 40, vein cheese, whilst penicillium camberti covers cheese? Does the difference lie in the process? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, but they are two different strains, of course. Um, penicillium Roque 40, uh, Contrary to popular belief, it does grow on the outside of your cheese as well. Don't you worry about that. It's because we pierce the cheese with an instrument like a needle, uh, as in like a knitting needle or the thermometer or what have you. Um, and that, um, that creates pockets of air. So oxygen can flow to the inside of the cheese. And when we make blue cheese, we make it a lot looser in structure than we do with, say, camembert or brie, uh, which has moisture curds, uh, 
uh, Stilton and, and all those sort of blue cheeses have a drier curd. That way there will be pockets of air in the middle. And the Penicillium Roquefort is already in the milk. So when it gets access to oxygen, it starts to grow on the inside and you get the veins. Whereas when you make, um, like I said, Camembert and Brie, the curds are a lot moister. You don't tend to get any pockets of air. And of course you don't pierce the cheese either to let oxygen in if there are pockets of air. Um, I actually have seen a, a Camembert that I made um, that it was really high um, and for some reason there was a crack in the cheese and it went all the way into one of those pockets and inside was a little pocket of fuzzy white mold. There you go. So it does happen. It, it is all in the process. Anyway, great question. Thank you, Patty. That was an original question. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, just because of that, I am going to... I'm going to do something special. Look, like I do. Where is it? I'm going to throw some memberships, if this works. Is it working today? Oh, it's, it's a bit... Well, here we go. Right here, I'm going to throw some memberships into the chat as gifts. So if you want one, pick it up. You've got to be quick though, because they will go very quick. There we go. It's coming. I've hit the buy button. There we go. So if you want a, want a, want a um, free membership, throw it in there. Um, pick it up. You should be able to pick it up in the chat. One, two, three, four... Five, fantastic. All the lurkers, all the people that don't comment become members. It's it's always, and please, if you're now there, then don't forget to say g'day. Uh, even if you don't have a question, just say hello. It's always good to see new people. Um, okay, so let's just get rid of that. That's all good. Thank you so much for everybody who picked up those memberships, um, as it was my pleasure to gift them um now what was i talking about right uh there is a question we did talk about the differences between the two penicilliums right so vincent has a question he says have you ever tried raw milk for howder um have i made a raw milk howder no can't say i have but in holland they use raw milk and they get a very nice product um Patricia says, uh, do you suppose Kim will be putting in an appearance on the Wednesday Ask the Cheese Man live streams as they seem to happen in the evening instead of the morning? Yes. Um, well, I won't say yes for her. Um, yes, they do happen on Wednesday evening my time. And Will she make an appearance? Don't know. She's still looking after doggos. So that's the problem. Well, if, if Ben's not home, who's our son who lives here as well, um, if he's not home, there's nobody to look after doggos. And they just run around, <laughs> run around barking and doing dog stuff, like, you know, dogs do, of course, and uh, would interrupt the stream. And that would be, that would be no fun for anybody, of course. Um, so uh, will she? Maybe. Uh, I would have to convince her again. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll hit her up, Patricia. I'll see what she says. Um, but I'm not promising anything. <laughs> uh, 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 Tracy says, um, I'm reading a shift. Sorry, I'm reading a shift to brining at cave temps, especially with washing curd cheese that's prone to blowing. What are your thoughts? Uh, yes, so the bacteria at higher temperatures do... Uh, have higher activity, of course. So if you're uh, brining at a higher temperature, like room temperature, 21 degrees Celsius, or what have you, uh, for a long time, then yeah, the bacteria is going to create more CO2 if it's in there. Um, so if you brine at room temperature, uh, the back, uh, sorry, at uh, cheese cave temperature, about 13 degrees Celsius, then that's less of a chance that that lactobacteria is going to have a runaway um, breeding, if that makes sense. Um, but it, it's not going to stop early blowing. 
um, because that's just inherent in the cheese. The coleiform bacteria is just there and you just can't get rid of it without pasteurization. Um, for late blowing, yeah, it may, there may be something that happens there. I'm not sure as far as the chemistry goes. So, um, But yeah, it is recommended to brine. If you've got a really large cheese and you're brining it for you know up to 24 hours then or more, then definitely they they do brine them at uh, at cheese temperature so uh yeah good question tracy and we've got another super chat goodness me oh, we'll just turn that off thank you so much uh that was cheryl again cheryl thank you for the 20 dollars uh is it too late to make wensleydale for christmas now wensleydale takes up to three months to make so October, November, December. It'll be a bit young, uh, but yeah, you probably still could uh, if you made it, well, today, I suppose, or tomorrow for you. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, it'd still be ripe. I'd, yeah, just grab it early because it's late in December, isn't it? So, uh, and it's early October. Yeah, two, one, two, two and a half, two, yeah, two and three quarter months. It'll be fine. So, yeah, you get a nice cheese out of that, Cheryl. So thank you so much for the kind super chat. I really appreciate it, as always. Okay. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, Cheryl says, uh, I did not know how to do that. Um, I'm not sure what we're talking about. I think we're talking about the memberships patty says um for next time how do you pick up the membership thank you for answering my first question very fa uh, fascinating uh there should be a pop-up in the um in the chat box patty that um uh it'll say accept membership and you can just click the button i'm pretty sure that's how it works I've, I've never had anybody gift a membership to me if that makes sense um but yeah, there is an indication in the chat box that there are memberships going. You've got to be quick, though. Um, I did... Uh, what I did... I gifted 10 memberships on uh, Wednesday, uh, about four, a fortnight ago. And within half a second, um, they were all gone. <laughs> uh, and Tracy's got a little bit more information there. It says, you have to turn on accepting memberships. I think that does come up in the chat box, though, up the top. Uh, so yeah, so you've got to accept the membership, turn on the settings so you can, and then accept it quickly. <laughs> All right, thanks. That was a great question and great reply. Thank you so much, Tracy, for that. Um, cool Cat says, Christmas is an especially good time for curd nerds because it's a holiday celebrating baby cheeses. Oh, that's... That's deserving of a rim shot. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, good joke. All righty. Um, it is time for the gallery. Da -da -da -da. Wish I had some music for that. Um, all righty. So let me just pop that up. Ba -ba -ba. Gallery time. Here we are. Do we still have music? Yeah, of course we have. That's great. We've got music everywhere. Um, now, who's this one from? This is from Habib, who I haven't seen in the chat today because uh, it's probably pretty late where he is in uh, Lebanon. So, Habib says, Dear Gavin, I wanted to share my cheese press photos with you and I would love to hear your comments. Uh, it is completely handmade and assembled by me. Basically, the wood is coated with an impermeable coating and usually... Usually, the cheese uh, doesn't get in contact with the wood. The mold is a sturdy uh, 316 grade stainless steel pierced on the bottom and sides with not a lot of holes, as you may notice. And the top is plexiglass. Oh, hang on, I've got to go to the next slide. Oh, I lo love the press, by the way. It's so good, Habib. Um, right, so he's got how many centimeters pressed down is how many kilograms he's worked that out which is great and right so there's a stainless steel bowl he's using as a mold i think yeah that's it 
And it's got some, he sanded the inside very, very finely to get rid of any burrs or anything. So, right, so back to his comments. It says, uh, not a lot of holes and a two centimeter plexi plate. Where's that? Right, here we go. So he's used uh, acrylic by the looks of it. Um, with a metallic cup that lets the lower wooden bar press on the whole set. Then using a ruler and depending how much weight I should use, I would screw the top wooden bar to the corresponding length. Of course, I could change the springs for more or less weight if I needed. Lately, I'm using ply band uh, as my cheesecloth draining because it really aids in the draining. It gives the ride a nice texture and seems to dry faster. Any comments that might improve the whole setting are more than appreciated. Many thanks and cheese, Habib. Um, look, I think you've nailed it, really, Habib. It doesn't look too shabby at all. It looks really good. And I like the way you've got the locking nuts down the bottom, down here. Can you see it? Oh, there we go. My head's nearly in the way. So the locking nuts to stop it from coming loose. So that's really cool. Um, let me just have a look. And got rid of the burrs. That's fantastic. I think it's really... I love the little draining plate. So it had that on the edge of the sink so that it all drain out. So the cheese isn't sitting in its way. So no, other than that, fantastic job. Well done, mate. Really good. Alrighty. So the next cheese is... Oh, Habib is here. Oh, hello. Lovely to see you, mate. Uh, oh, just look to the chat. Alrighty. Um, this one is from... Michael and Jenny. Let's been get the little right. It says here, hi Gavin. After three months, it was time to open up the kafili. Uh, very creamy, nice rind, and happy with the result. That does look does look good, and the rind is visible. So yeah, well done, and you've cleaned that up nicely. Because kafili does tend to grow a little bit of mould on the outside because it's, it's kafili. Um, and this one is one that Jenny made, um, Michael's wife. It says, Jenny's Asiago with truffle has nice texture, a nice mild taste. Um, hoping the other, uh, popping the other in back in the fridge might develop the truffle flavor. Great result. It looks lovely. Can I just zoom in? Let's have a look. Yeah, little flakes of truffle there. That looks really good. A little bit of eye development, some gas going on there. But I think that looks pretty good. I'd eat that with gusto. Excellent. Well done, mate. All right, let's pop that back out there again. There we are. All righty. Um, thanks, Michael and Jenny, for sending those in. The next one is from Shauna. And it looks like Shauna's got some cloudberry jam there. Very good. And we know what goes with cloudberry jam, don't we? It's Lipa Justo. <laughs> I managed to say it right. Uh, it says, hey, Gavin and Kim, just had to share. I made my fourth Oostkaka yesterday along with a new Queso Chihuahua and Lipa Justo today. Very nice, definitely squeaky and perfect with the cloudberry jam. Thank you for the recipes. Smiley faces. That looks perfect. It's exactly how I've seen... Well, it looks the same as mine. Uh, I like the cup, by the way. <laughs> um, and then there's the coffee bit. It says, We'll say that we weren't huge fans of it in the coffee. Uh, an acquired taste, I suppose. See you on Sunday, Shauna. Thank you, Shauna, for sending those in. And, you know, I, I also... Uh, was not a big fan of the coffee version of the Leaper Eusto. I was quite happy with the cloudberry jam. Um, uh, it was delicious. We, we just it was gone within oh, within ten minutes. You know the whole family had a piece and they said it was fantastic, which it is. You know it's a lovely, lovely um, cheese. So for those who have not tried making Leaper Eusto, then I highly recommend you give it a go because. It is unusual, and with the cloudberry jam, or any sort of jam really, cloudberry just happens to be native to Finland, um, where the cheese comes from, and oh, it, it's just delicious. Um, and cloudberry jam is delicious on toast as well, by the way. Um, nice bit of butter and some toast. All right, Erin um, says, uh, 
just home from a dairy goat convention uh, where we ate a full... Uh, oh, Super Chat, another one. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl again, but there's no question. Throw a question in the chat, Cheryl. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Thank you so much. Uh, just home... I'll start again. Erin, thank you, Erin. Um, just home from a dairy goat convention where we ate our fill of goat milk cheeses. I fell in love with Robbie Ola. Rob E. Ola. Yep, I think I said that right. Uh, have you given it a try? No, I haven't, but I do have a recipe. Uh, I've saw it in a book. I will have a look. Sounds interesting, but I'll have a look. Uh, I th no, that was Reblichon I tried to make once and failed miserably. Um, Robbiola, I'll have a look, um, but I'm sure I can find a recipe for it. Thank you so much, uh, Aaron. Uh, where are we? Um, uh, uh, Titus, you're late. Greetings to all. G'day, Sir Gavin Cheese a lot. Oh, funny. You're a funny man. Um, uh, the kafili looks great. Yeah, indeed it was. Um, uh, X says, Hello, sir. What cheeses would you recommend for a storage space that doesn't have great climate control? Um, X, I would rec highly recommend that you go and look at the video on my channel called Beginner's Cheeses Without a Cheese Fridge. And... There's about five or six different cheeses that you don't need a cheese fridge for, but you can put them in your normal kitchen fridge, which most households have these days. And um, yeah, it, it's better. It, maturing cheese without climate control is a recipe for disaster. Uh, the lactic bacteria breeds uncontrollably and you get all sorts of nasty things. Not only could you get a highly acidic cheese, which would be, pardon me, very crumbly. Um, it it uh, it may taste rancid. All sorts of terrible things or bitter um, can happen to your cheese if it's not ripened at the correct temperature. And before I forget, thank you, Cheryl, for that kind ten dollars US. Um, and you do have a question. Here it is. Uh, says, does the humidity matter if the cheese is vac-packed? Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter at all. Um, the only reason I say humidity for most of the cheese recipes is if they, if you want to naturally age them and, and form a rind on them, um, that's why I put the humidity in most of those. Um, it does matter a little bit if you're using wax to wax a cheese. Um, but not really these days because we use micro crystalline waxes uh, and they don't they aren't affected by humidity beeswax though if people are using a bee wax blend or something like that for their cheese wax then yes if that does dry out it tends to crack and uh, molds and yeasts can get onto the surface of the cheese underneath the wax and ruin the cheese sometimes so but humidity does not matter if the cheese is vac-packed. Uh, great question, and thank you for your super chat, uh, Cheryl. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Croesus of Borg says, Vegemite on toast with cheddar on the side. Do you know what? I, I don't know if Croesus is from Australia, but... Vegemite and cheese is a tradition here in Australia. So you toast your bread, obviously, put a bit of butter on the bread, on the toast, and it melts. Then you whack down your Vegemite, uh, not thickly. You only use a tiny bit of Vegemite on your toast, right? And then you put a slice of cheese, whether it's real cheese or processed cheese, that's up to you. I go for the real cheese. And then you bite into it and it's beautiful. In fact, they've made this product in Australia. I don't know if you can get it anywhere else, but it's called Cheesy Mite. So what they've done, they've mixed cream cheese, processed cream cheese, with Veggie Mite. So uh, you don't get that really sharp Veggie Mite 
burst, um, but it's it's creamy. So I actually use that instead of Vegemite and cheese. I use the Cheesy Mite. I, th I can't remember. I think it's called Cheesy Mite or Cheesy Bite. or They keep changing the name of it all the time. Um, Kraft used to make it, but they abandoned their factory in Australia and Bega, the cheese company here in Australia, bought them out. Uh, and they make Veggie Mite and the Cheesy Mite as well here in Australia now. Um, uh, Tracy's got a, a side note on that. It says, like Marmite and cheese in the UK, they even make a cheese with it in it. Um, yeah, I've actually seen... No, have I seen cheese a cheese with Veggie Mite in it? I'm not sure. Well, that'd be something in, unique to try, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, whew, cheese with Veggie Mite. But it does have Vegemite's made with yeast byproducts from brewing, so you, hopefully there wouldn't be any yeast left in it. Cheese with Vegemite, very interesting. Might be something uniquely Australian that one. Anyway, thank you for the great idea there, Tracy. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. Um, Next question, this one's from M. Hello, M. Uh, this question's probably been asked before, but is it possible to use milk made from dry milk powder for cheese? Um, not in the traditional sense, M. When you rehydrate it, it's missing a lot of the calcium. Uh, the protein's in there, and so is the, um, some calcium, but not enough to form a casein matrix, so it won't work with rennet, per se. However, if you use, there are a few YouTube recipes um, that I have seen that use powdered milk to form something kind of like a processed uh, mozzarella. Uh, so go and have a look at it. There are quite a few that you can go and check out on YouTube. Um, I don't think I'll be making one in a hurry. Uh, but yeah, you can use dry powdered milk for some processed type cheeses. You can also use dry powdered milk uh, for making yogurt. That actually does work. I have tried it. So you rehydrate the milk to the specifications. Don't use skim milk powder. Use full cream milk powder. And you can make yogurt from it. It's a little bit sloppy, uh, but it does work. So uh, if anybody else has got any other experience of cheese making with milk powder, then throw something in the comment there uh, to help out M. And it actually hadn't, I don't think it has been asked before. So, oh, Croesus Aborg is from Florida. There you go. Uh, so you'd be so familiar with Vegemite. <laughs> you need to get yourself a jar, it's good, good stuff. Uh, cool Cat says, um, Vegemite is wonderful stuff, used to be the bry product brewing industry. Yeah, indeed. Um, it, it is uniquely Australian as far as I'm concerned. It grew up with it, Vegemite. Uh, Patricia says, so Australia says yes to cheesy mite, but no to cheese mites. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, that's almost like a... Right, here we go. There you go. <laughs> that was that was a good one. Or should it be this? All right. Uh, which reminds me, we've got a few minutes. I've got, <laughs> I've got a couple more jokes here because we can. Let's just uh, take Patricia's lovely comment off the screen. Um... All right, joke time. Uh, I used to be a French cheese nut, but now I can and bear it no longer. Right, I. That's unusual. Anyway. Um, right. Here's another one. Uh, a man tried to start a fight by throwing dough, shredded cheese, and tomato sauce at me. So I said to him, you want a pizza, me? Right. Sounds like Robert De Niro. Right. That's ordinary. Um, <laughs> right. I, I actually have been watching a bit of Star Wars lately, so this is, this is quite pertinent. Um, righty. Uh, what cheese do they eat in a galaxy far, far away? Boba Fetter. Or was that Boba Fetter? Oh, goodness. They're getting worse. Wor worse jokes. Oh, and last one for today. What is the world's strongest cheese? 
Arnold Schwarzer Cheddar. Who comes up with these? Oh, here, over the face, Gav. There we go. There we go. That was that was lame. Anyway, that'll do. That, that'll do as far as jokes go today. Thank you very much for listening to my terrible jokes. Um, alrighty. Uh, um, uh, Evan says, um, I'm making a Vegemite cheddar at the moment. I'll send you a pic when it's done. It's looking very good. That's fantastic. Thank you, Evan. Um, you could, uh, if if possible, you can shoot me um, the recipe that you've used. That would be fantastic. Or where where the variation in the normal, uh, whether it be the farmhouse cheddar or normal cheddar recipe, where the variation is, and I can just pop that into my normal recipe. That would be fantastic. I'd love that. Thank you very much, Evan. For sharing um oh what i did forget to do at the end of the gallery was show everybody where to send in um where to send in any submissions for the gallery let me just uh, pull that up uh, okay and two seconds this takes a bit of time right so, uh, you go to the Gavin Webber channel, that's me, uh, and you go to the About tab, just here, and down here it says, uh, For Business Inquiries, View Email Address, and if you're logged in already, you'll see a little thing that says, I'm not a robot, and then it'll show you uh, the email address. So that email address is where you send uh, all of the photos that you've taken of your lovely cheese, Please send them in. Um, it's been going to a bit of a trickle at the moment, but if you've got some photos, shoot them in. I would love to see them. Um, but that is that is where you find the email address to send me the uh, your photos or photos and a question or what have you. So that um, that is fantastic. Thank you. And that is also uh, where if you've got any cheese making recipes that you think that haven't been on the channel, and you've managed to get your hands on them or translated them from uh, your native tongue, perfect, send them through and I'll put them on the list um, to be made. Because I still have this, I was talking to Kim the other day, um, well, I talk to her every day, but <laughs> I was t talking about cheese and she says, she said to me, what's one of your goals in life, Gavin? I said, because um, she calls me Gavin, she doesn't call me Gav or anything like that. Um, and I said, I want to make all the cheeses. I want, to make, I want to make as many cheeses that I possibly can, all variations, and that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And she goes, well, that is a noble cause. And I went, yeah, I think it is. So that's what, that's what I want to do. Uh, and there's another super chat. Thank you so much. And it's from Cheryl again. Cheryl, you've got a bottomless bank account. Thank you so much says um, i want to thank you for being the chief uh cheese nerd or curd nerd what have you thank you so much cheryl i really appreciate all of the dollars you're throwing my way um and obviously it goes into supporting the show and keeping the roof over our heads and all the equipment and the electricity on that's that's always a bonus electricity prices going through the roof um not so much here but in other parts of the world it's crazy um uh, somebody said something about Kim. Where was that? Um, uh, Tracy says, plus Kim gets to eat them all, so it's a win-win. Indeed. She loves cheese. Uh, uh, what, Cheryl says, what cheese goes with a Bloody Mary? Um, well, uh, Cool Cat says, uh, that's a trick question because all cheese goes with a Bloody Mary. Indeed, it, all cheese goes with any drink. So I would totally agree there. Um, uh, <laughs> where is it? Uh, M says, what's uh, your best advice for beginner cheesemakers? Uh, I think that you shouldn't be shy. Uh, don't don't be apprehensive in making cheese. Cheese has been made for 
over 10,000 years um, in civilization. So I'm sure there was some mistakes that they made early on as well um, that couldn't be eaten and had to be fed to the pigs or what have you. Um, but don't be shy, it's only milk. Um, give it a go, give it a try, um, get a good book. Um, I've got a couple, but there are lots of other cheese making books out there. Um, and watch a few videos and get the hang of it. Make a simple cheese first. So make some simple ones, get success under your belt, and that'll give you the confidence to do some more. Um, if you can find a cheese making class in your area, then there are some good teachers out there. There's some crappy ones too, but there are some good teachers out there who make cheese. Tracy is a good teacher. She's in the chat there. Um, so uh, if you're in the British Columbia area, then she teaches cheese. I think it's, uh, oh, where, where is it? Where do you live? Somewhere George. Port George? No, something George. Um, you'll throw that in there in a minute, but... Yeah, um, don't forget to sanitize. That's my biggest tip. Sanitize your equipment, um, everything. And there is a video on sanitization there, so make sure that you go and check that out and see how to sanitize your equipment because it'll save you so much heartache in the long run. Um, okay, now, um, we've only got a few minutes left. Uh, Sean has got a question about Leodama. It says, my Leodama is at room temperature ripening stage and keeps breaking out of the wax. I keep resealing the wax. Should I give up on the wax and just re and just vac seal? Um, it's at this stage, um, Shauna, that I, if it's getting too big and it's, and you know, it's puffing right up, put it back into the cheese fridge because the gas development's getting, you know, rambunctious, if that's the word. So to slow all that down, put it back into the cheese cave at 13 degrees or, you know, between 10 to 13. And that'll slow down the uh, the eye development and just you, you'll you just have to reseal the wax one more time and then you should be good to go. Um, but it seems like the, the eye development's going a bit crazy there. You don't want massive big eyes in a small cheese. It just doesn't look appealing. So it'll taste great, but it just doesn't look appealing. So, um, yeah, if it's doing that all the time... Uh, then it's probably got to a fairly big stage, a uh, big size anyway. So like I said, pop it into the cheese fridge to slow that process down. You probably only need to reseal it once more um, before you pop it in. So great question. I think some other people had some other advice around that. Uh, Jim says, I've made several Leodamas. If mine start to swell and break up the wax, I chill the cheese overnight and re-wax. Yeah, good advice, Jim. Um, uh, vac packing will compress your cheese so hit the seal button before all the air is gone yeah no good advice um, uh, cool <laughs> cool cat says when I die I want my ashes to use to cover some of that black ash coated cheese there are a few of them I uh, can't remember the name interesting I I don't personally um, I want to be buried in a tree or something like that and a tree grow out of me or what have you but yeah that uh, that's interesting <laughs> but uh, okay I'll move along uh, Croesus says my doctor says my cholesterol is a bit high and I need to cut cheese or eggs from my diet I'm going to miss eggs <laughs> ah, perfect love it um, uh, oh, Tracy says she's in Prince George, in the Prince George. I knew it was George something. Thank you, Tracy. Um, uh, M says, um, that's awesome, thanks. What are the simple cheeses that you recommend starting with? I'm in New Zealand too. Um, uh, well, paneer, ricotta, halloumi, feta. Uh, and if you want to get a little bit more adventurous, try bel paese. So... There you go, there's some off the top of my head. Great cheeses. Uh, and I think most of those are in that video anyway. Um, uh, Mary, uh, sorry, Cheryl says, Jack in the Box is really good with my Bloody Mary. And that Jack in the Box is your creation, Cheryl. I've actually got the recipe for that. And I will be making that uh, when I feel a little bit better. So that's good. Um, Titus says, will you, Gavin, feature in the cheese gallery if I sum up, submit 
pictures of Velveeta and Cheese Whiz. Only Titus if you've made them yourself. If you made them yourself, I will show them. If you've got them out of a can or a packet, then no, I won't show them. So there you go. That's my promise to you. If you can make those two very crappy processed cheeses, then I will show them. There you go. Uh, not the reaction you thought you'd get, was it? Eh? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> there we go. Oh, goodness me. Um, what time is it? Oh, four minutes to go. All right. So because I'm going to make some cheese today, I'm going to finish up now. Um, if you want to learn how to make cheese and you haven't, you know, and you you want more information and you want a structured way of doing it, then I can highly recommend the Curd Nerd Academy. Uh, I've got a beginner's cheese making course. Go to courses. Oh, hang on. I'll show that again. Stop, stop going away. Uh, courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au uh, and we've got a bit of beginner's cheese course there. You can go and check that out. If you just, just want to pick up supplies, equipment and kits like the ones you can see behind me, um, go to littlegreenworkshops.com.au and go to the cheese making section there. And of course, if you want to pick up some lovely merch, uh, including cups like this one, you can go to that crazy URL there. Uh, what does the cup say? The cup says... Old wine, old cheese, and old friends make great company. Indeed, they do. So, yeah, you can go and pick up your merch there at uh, cheesemantv.creator-spring.com. I'll get a better URL one day. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, there is a show on Wednesday, uh, evening my time, um, which caters for Europe and Asia and Australia. Um, and, of course... Uh, next Sunday morning, my time, which caters for the Americas, North and South Americas, and some of Europe, and of course Australia, if you get up early enough on a Sunday morning. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, I appreciate you turning up, and it's been a lovely little show. And I will see you next Wednesday or sun Sunday, my time. All right, see you later, Curd Nerds. Bye-bye.